I'm going to be doing a review on PNB3 home loans using Prezi, and this is my response to the question about home loans. So basically, home loans can be done two separate ways. Oh, I don't know how to get this down. Oh, so they can be done two separate ways. So one is where they ask for one home loan, and the other is where they ask for two home loans. Sorry, I'm writing with my finger because my tablet is not here. Um, and for both of them, what you do is you start off with the paragraph on cortisol, and then on the second paragraph for both questions, you have to talk about the first study, which will always be the newcomer. The difference starts in the third paragraph where in the first hormone, first um, type of question where it's one hormone, you talk about that you mentioned another study with the same hormone. So that would be Fano and Gunner, 2008, which talks about cortisol again. Whereas for the two hormone eight mark question, you move and start talking about the second hormone, and that's oxytocin. Now for the one hormone, For the one hormone, this is finished, whereas for two hormones, you have to go in and add a study for the second hormone, and it'll be Bob Gardner et al. 2008. So two hormones is four paragraphs, and one hormone is three paragraphs. So basically in the first paragraph, what you talk about is um, you mentioned cortisol, you say the two key studies, you talk about Oh, this is, sorry, not the first paragraph, basically the whole essay, what I just mentioned to you before. What I'm going to be doing is uh, talking about all the both two, oh, sorry, I'm going to be talking about both of the eight marks merged into one, so I'm just going to be talking about both the key studies and also the oxytocin. So, um, the first paragraph is cortisol, and basically you have to define hormones. So hormones are chemical substances that are released by specific endocrine glands into the bloodstream, and just etc. Provide an example, which is cortisol. Um, the function is to um, regulate stress response during fight or flight by maintaining blood pressure, glucose, etc. Um, it can um, increase immunity and lower sensitivity of pain. Then you just introduce the key studies, which will be Newcomer et al. and Fanon and Gunner. And you have to say how they are related. So basically, the quick burst of energy, which is positive, can be Newcomer et al., whereas prolonged damage can be caused due to stress, and that's demonstrated by Fanon and Gunner. Um, click. Okay. Okay, um, so basically Newcomer et al. 1999 aimed to investigate how cortisol interfered with verbal declarative memory. The participants were 51 healthy people aged 18 to 30 and they were used for 4 days. The experiment was randomised, controlled and double blinded. They were put into 3 conditions. One was high level which they were each day given um, a tablet and the high level group had a tablet consisting of 160 milligrams grams of cortisol and that was equivalent to having major surgery. The group 2 had the low level which was 40 milligrams which was equivalent to having minor surgery like getting stitches out and there was a control group who was just given a placebo tablet. The results were that the high level group performed worse on the verbal declarative test than the low level group and basically the high level group performed worse than placebo group the police super group after day one so they actually decreased majorly and the low level group showed no memory decrease this they concluded that the cause and effect between levels of cortisol and scores on verbal declarative memory tests there was present and there was a negative correlation between them the two variables and thus it's evident that cortisol a hormone a hormone <laughs> Um, affected retrieval of memory in human behavior. You just have to relate it back to the question. Now, the second um, study is Fernand and Gunnar, 2008. And basically, it was a quasi-experiment, and the participants were children of depressed mothers. 
the mothers were not included in the experiment. The, they were, the children were the ones who were being tested. There was 324 boys and 315 girls, aged 2.5 to 6, and it was conducted with a house-to-house -house survey. Now, the Center of Epidemiological Studies, the depression scale was administered to mothers, um, and slivery cortisol samples were taken in the children as a me measure of hypothalamic pituitary adrenocortical system activity at these three times. And basically, I suggest you do memorize the full name for HPA because it just shows critical thinking. And basically, the procedure was that between time 0 and time 1, the children were administered with multiple cognitive tests and just to see how they respond to the stress. The results were that children with higher levels of maternal depressive systems had less of an increase in salivary cortisol due to the arrival, um, not due, um, they had just less of an increase of salivary cortisol when the experimenters and cognitive testing took place, and there was also lower baseline cortisol levels in children. So basically when researchers etc arrive and you get tested, your co cortisol levels should rise because your stress levels should rise. Um, basically, when your stress levels rise, your cortisol is the homeostatic hormone, hormone, and it tries to reduce the amount of stress and bring, brings you back to your homeostatic level. So, if the if the children's stress rise, their cortisol level should have rise to to maintain the homeostasis, but it didn't, and that is due to adrenal gland burnout. There was minimum increase in cortisol levels. Those who showed only minimal increase in cortisol levels. The hormone were present, had been presented with high maternal depressive systems, which is human behavior. And if that was the question for only one um, hormone, then that would be the end of your eight mark, and that's it. But if it was two hormones, you just won't even do phenol and gunner, and you go straight to this. So oxy. Oh, let me scroll down. So oxytocin, or and this is the fourth. Fourth paragraph basically. So, oxytocin or Baumgartner et al. What happened was this study was actually way too long to put in one paragraph. So, basically, I just merged it into one two separate and that's fine to do honestly so oxytocin you have to say it's another hormone it's released by the pituitary gland and the function is maternal behavior contractions lactation etc and when levels increases so basically oxytocin is obviously um, often referred to as a trust hormone and basically the amygdala in your limbic system in I think it's yeah I think it's in sorry if that's incorrect I'll check that up um, basically the amygdala has lots of oxytocin receptors on it and when um, when you feel a lot of fear um, the amygdala is strong for emotion so it activates the amygdala but when you have lots of oxytocin it goes in a lots of receptors cling onto the amygdala and it calms the amygdala down and therefore you have released you have decreased fear so basically that's just what happens when oxytocin increases and because you have increased fear decreased sorry decreased fear that increases your trust so they are inversely proportionate and basically oxytocin gives us the ability to to empathy and trust now Baumgartner at our 2000 they went and investigated the role ooh, <laughs> the role of oxytocin after the breach of trust in a trust game participants were basically it was just like a huge game and participants first played a trust game where they were told to act as the investor which was player one and they were given a sum of money and decided whether to keep it or share it with a trustee player two player two then decided if this sum if the sum should be shared which is trust or kept which is violation of trust 49 participants then received oxytocin by a, a um, oxytocin or a placebo via nasal spray and fMRI scans were then carried out. All, all of the participants received feedback upon a breach of trust. You can also use this in PNB6 for um, 
brain imaging technologies because of fMRI scans. Now, the results were that the participants in the placebo group actually invested less after being told that the trust had been broken, as anyone would do if in the business world, if you think about it logically. But participants in the oxytocin group continued to invest at similar rates as before, not being affected by the fact that their partner had broken their trust previously. The fMRI scans indicated decreases in response in the amygdala, which is responsible for emotional processing and has many oxytocin receptors, and the caudate nucleus, which is associated with learning and memory and plays a role in reward-related responses and learning to trust. So basically, in conclusion, oxytocin could explain why people are able to restore trust in what once was broken, and basically giving oxytocin like this in an experiment may not reflect natural physiological processes and the function of oxytocin is very complex. It is too simplistic to say that the, it is basically this trust hormone, although Baumgartner indicated that it does have a level of responsibility in trust. The results of this study suggest that oxytocin, a hormone, is majorly responsible for the trust when people communicate with each other and that is human behavior and that's basically it guys so good luck and i'm sure you'll do fine and i've also i've actually my friend did a detailed summary of film gartner with animation so i'll just link that to you here i it's just another video on my channel but yeah it's pretty lengthy and it'll help you understand because it is quite a complicated study so yeah good luck